Now if you wish to add gamepad, just do the same thing. Gamepad state previous G state current G state. G stands for gamepad and if you want to keep it consistent above set previous state to previous K state and current state to current K state for K for keyboard. Alright, I do not have anything else for input to demonstrate, so that'll be it. Okay. Okay, now let's worry about the properties state. And we're going to use properties to determine what we're going to do. And the properties are going to like determine if we're going to activate a menu entry or remove a menu or move the object or something of that effect. And they're all going to be public and they're all going to be bool. And then we determine the action we want to use. In this case, move up, for example. Let's get and then we return. Now when we move up, we do not care if it's a brand new key press or not. We're just moving up. So we traditionally we most players want to hold the up button and just keep on moving up. They don't want to press up and just move up ten pixels and then keep on pressing. They just want to hold the up button. So either way we can just do current K state is equal to or dot is key down keys dot up that is the up arrow so if the current keyboard state is key down which means we're holding the up button because we're passing keys dot up so that to, that determines a bool so if the keys dot up is down it's going to return true, true so we want to move up so that's what this does and then we don't have sets because we don't have dedicated uh, field for a move up. Then if you want to save some time, copy this, paste it below, and call it move down. And set keys dot up to keys dot down. And since you already have a copy, to press enter twice and paste it below. And set move left and set keys dot up to keys dot left. Okay, so that will be keys dot left as left arrow key. Now we go down and press enter twice again, and we do the last movement, which is move right, and then keys dot right. Now you might be thinking, why do we keep on doing this over and over and over again? And the answer is, we can fix that by doing a method region and this is what you will notice in the sample is we have a public bool is key press or you can call it is pressed key or anything you want is keyboard press and then we pass it keys k then we return a current k state that is key down k. And then we just call is a keyboard press and replace it with current k state that is key down and just do that for every one of them. Now this will be a very simple system. You can modify it to do key mapping where you just have a, a string, a keyboard representation of that action. The string will hold the action, like left, to move. Then the first will be the keyboard representation of that action. And then the next will be a gamepad representation of that action. So when you do is 
a pressed action, you just pass it the string you want to check for the action, and then for the gamepad and keyboard, you just check to see if those representations are pressed or active. But for this tutorial, it's just going to be very basic. We're going to have two, two, two different methods to determine if it's a keyboard and gamepad. So in the method, let's make another one called public bool is gamepad press. Now, if we move right, we also want to determine the or if it's not moved right, we want that priority. So There's uh, two different ways you can do this. To move right, you can have it set to where the keys start right. The keyboard, it moves static, so you press, it will move the same amount, and then you release, it stops. Now for the gamepad, you basically want to have the useful of a joystick where you barely move it, and it barely moves the object. You press it all the way to the left, it moves all the way to the left. You press it all the way to the right, it moves all the way to the right. And anywhere in between, it will slowly speed up or slow down depending on which direction you go to. Now, if you just use this public bool and just do set a threshold for the joystick to where you have uh, current G state dot thumbsticks dot left dot so you move right so the x direct has to be greater than zero or you can have a greater threshold to where it's half distance and then you suddenly move it's greater than 0 0.5 since that is between 0 and 1 the thumbsticks you can hover over it hover over the left it'll be for between 0 and 1 so if it's 0 0.5, you need an F there, because it will default to double, so it will throw you a compile error. So that's if you want a static movement. So you press the joystick, and it will constantly move, no matter if you are 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, all the way, all the way up to uh, 1. So if you do not want constant movement, just delete this line and have a property that gets the vector 2 and then you need to add using Microsoft framework and the vector 2 will be left thumb stick and that's just oops it's a public vector 2 left thumb stick uh, something's not working there. Public vector two left thumb opening closing. Alright, that'll be fixed for some reason. It's not liking that. So we we'll get return current G state dot thumbsticks dot x dot left dot x. Now, we just want the left thumbstick, so we don't care about the left or right. So we just do left. And then that's it. And for some reason, it's not liking this. So let's compile it and see what's going on here. Ah, okay. So we need to modify that later on. Okay, so that's it for the left thumbstick. So you can add the capability in the move right. But in this case, we do not want to have static movement for the gamepad. So move, move right, move left, move up, move down will just be dedicated to the keyboards. Now we have one more property left to do, and that's center. This is where our another method will come 